Hi, this is Mindy Benini, and welcome to using PeerMark for your peer review in Desire to Learn. PeerMark is a multi-step process, and we're going to go over each of the steps. Earlier, we went over how to create and submit the initial assignment. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to actually turn on PeerMark and get those groups divided up so that your students can begin doing their peer review. We're going to begin in Oaks in our content area, and this was the assignment holding tank that we created earlier. You'll notice that we have three assignments already submitted in here. Now don't be alarmed about the similarity reports. These are all sample documents that I have downloaded from the internet and uploaded into these areas as assignments. So it's not surprising that we do have some copyright protected flags. In order to turn on peer review, we're going to click the gear icon on the right hand side of the screen. At this point, this date and time has passed. We do not want to do this process until this date and time has passed. The reason is the second we click enable peer mark, it will begin dividing up the papers and it won't do a good job if other papers come in after we've done this division. So we're going to choose enable peer mark now and submit. And you'll see we have a new peer mark tab up here at the top. Let's go ahead and choose peer mark setup from that drop down menu. This time, the maximum amount of points is for the actual peer review. Now, here's a little bit of a disappointment. These grades will not automatically pass to the Oaks gradebook. You will have to manually enter these grades into the gradebook if you're including those in your final calculated grade. So I'm going to give each peer review 20 points. Again, we have a start and an end and a feedback time. In this case, the start date is when students can begin reviewing other students' work. The end date is the last possible date that they can review other students' work. In this case, I'm going to leave it as today's date, but I'm going to make it 1 o'clock. And the feedback, I'm not going to let them see their feedback until later today. All right, your additional settings. Are we going to give them points if they do the review? That's just if they do it. Um, students can view the names of the peers during the review process. If I say no because I want an anonymous review, this is going to only work if the students don't put their names on their papers when they turn them in. In this case, I don't really care, so I'm just going to leave it as no. Students without a submission can review. This means that if I didn't turn one in, I can still review somebody else. In this case, I'm going to say no. I'd like to automatically distribute my papers for review and I want each of my students to have to review two papers. Students can self-select papers for review. I'm going to say no to this. I want my papers to be automatically distributed. I don't want the students to pick. And then a student must review their own paper. I'm going to say yes, they do need to do their own paper. And from there, we'll do save and continue. Now the next thing we need to do is set up our peer mark questions. So you'll see we're just going in order here. Peer mark questions. This is what do what I want the students to have to answer when they're in doing the review of the paper. So I'm going to choose add a question. So I've just put a question in here. Tell me one thing that you learned from this paper. And I'm going to make it a free response. And we'll say save. So that's how you add your own questions. All right, we can also go to the add from library. And let's just take a look at the sample library. So these are some questions from which you can choose that are already pre-selected, pre-set within the PeerMark product. So we'll choose this one, this one. So we'll say add selected questions. So I now have four questions. You'll see that I can still edit them even though I added them from this library area. And if you use the same ones over and over again, you can also save them to the library so that next time you come in, you'll be able to just use the ones that you already created. So we're going to go forward from this area and now let's go to distribution. Once we have all the questions we want the students to answer, we'll go to distribution and it's going to show me here that it has assigned each student two papers. All right, so we're completely finished here with this process as the instructor. In our next video, we'll see what this looks like from the student's view.